when you don't know the way of the Spirit. Oak House Church brings to you the word of life which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. Lord, when we are in your presence, our hearts begin to beat faster. enthrone you in our hearts. We enthrone you, Lord, in this place, in your church, the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. We come to worship you. We come to praise your name. We come to honor you. We come to let you again to know that it is in you that we live and move and have our being. You have been our source. You have been our sustainer. No one like you. No one can be compared to you. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the A and the Z. You open the door, no one closes. And you close when no one can open it. Who is like you in all the earth, in all of creation? Who is it that can be compared to you? Absolutely none. From the depth of our hearts, Lord, we say thank you for being our Father, for being our God. We thank you, Lord, for adopting us. Thank you for giving us the spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father. Glory be to your name. Glory be to Jesus, Holy Spirit of our Father, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of grace, and the Spirit of the glory of the Father. We honor you tonight. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We honor you because of what you are doing in our lives, what you are doing in this place. Thank you, Father. You did not call, you did not, we did not choose ourselves, you chose us. You ordained us, you equipped us that we might go and bear precious fruits unto you. Open our eyes again as we sit at your feet to hear you speak. The word of life that is able to build us up. The bread of life. Give to everyone that is hungry tonight. Satisfy every heart, every soul. Bring healing, bring deliverance, bring understanding to everyone that hears your voice tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Um, before I forget, please, um, Raj, Susan, Kenide, Jojo, um, King, and him. When all is said and done, please, and then precious. When all is said and done, you wait behind. I want to see you before you go. Okay? All right. Good evening, everybody. How has it been today? I hope you are smiling. I say, I hope you are smiling. And then if you are smiling, can I see your teeth? Okay, it's only Pasaki zone that I can see. 
give me a smile. Hey. Uh -huh. Alinta, you are, now you are talking. I say, give me a smile. I want to see your teeth. Don't you have a teeth? Or don't you have teeth? Prof, or is it because you're a prof? Or because you're a professor? Or prophet? Smile. Smile. Everything is not... I know Holy Ghost. I know, I know we want to be Holy Ghost. Spirit feel, which is good. But also remember that you are living on this side of life. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, let's see how far we can go tonight. I remember on, um, I think it was on a Sunday, I did mention there are four categories of believers in Christ Jesus who will go from heaven to hellfire. Who will go from heaven to the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. I know what a lot of people have heard over time that once you are saved, you are forever saved, and then you can never go to hellfire anymore. And I want to say there is no iota of truth in it. It is the biggest lie of the century. And I give you the book of Matthew chapter number 8, and uh, from verses 5 to 12. That says, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching, uh, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of palsy, grievously tormented. And then Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. He can trust Jesus Christ. His words are yea and amen, and he will come. But then this centurion now said to him, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to, his, to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Underline that word in your Bible. I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. <coughs> Excuse me. And then verse 11 said, And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so I said there are four categories of Christians that are going to go from heaven to the outer darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. You will be bound hand and feet. Now, <clears throat> For record purposes, I just mentioned them. Uh, some people came to me after the service and they were trying to get the correct um, whatever. I said the first group of people that will go from hell, from heaven, you know, the Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 and 11, he said, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And then we shall give an account of whatever we have done in this body, whether it is good or bad. We're going to answer. 
And if you are found wanting from there, you go to the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of feet. But that should not be your portion in Jesus' name. <clears throat> I say it should not be your portion in Jesus' name. Okay. So I said the first group, number one, not just the first, the number one is those who do not have faith, the faithless Christians, they will go to the outer darkness. The second group are those that do not have or keep their garment white. Those who don't maintain their garment white. That is those who don't live a life of purity, a life of holiness, those who do not live a life of righteousness, they are in this category. Without holiness, you can see God. So the garment that you are putting on is a dirty garment. It's not a white garment. It's not a white linen. White, the, the fine linen talks about the righteousness of God. And then the white garment speaks about purity. It speaks about righteousness. So that is the second group. The third group are those who don't have lamps on, I mean, who do not have oil in their lamps. And I say that those oil, the oil speaks about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the oil is an emblem of the Holy Spirit. And so they lack Holy Spirit in their lives. They don't live a spirit-filled life. They are not ruled and controlled by the Holy Spirit. They live in the Spirit, but they don't walk in the Spirit. The Bible tells us in Galatians 5, in 25, he said, now that you live, in, if you live in the Spirit, you walk in the Spirit. But they live in the Spirit. They live in the church. They are in Christ, but they don't bear the fruit. They don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead them. And when the Holy Spirit is not leading you, you know what is leading you. You are living by your flesh. And that's why the Bible said a carnally minded person cannot please God and all of that. But that is not where I'm going to anyway. And then... The fourth group are those of them that do that are at ease in Zion. Like that young man that was given a talent. He didn't use his talent. So we have a lot of giftings from the Holy Spirit from Christ. We have been equipped, we have been called in one office or the other, you are going to give an account on that day so that you will not be like that young man that was given a talent and he didn't do anything with it. So what I want to look at today, I want to take it one by one, but it's only one I'm going to deal with today. And that is the first one, which is faith. Faithlessness. The man did not have, remember what Jesus said. In that Matthew chapter 8, the conversation was that where, by, before he finally made the statement in verse 12, in which he said in that verse 12, that so, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of. Why would they be cast out into the outer darkness? What is the reason? Why casting them out into the outer darkness? The reason, remember, Jesus Christ was talking about faith. A young man, a centurion, came to him and said, my servant was sick. And Jesus promised that he was coming to his house to deal with the situation. And he said, no, I'm a man under authority and all of that. He, just, just, he said, just speak a word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus said, he, the Bible said Jesus was marvel. He said, I've never seen this kind of faith. No, not in Israel. Now, he now turned and said, you see you people that are sitting here calling yourself the children of Abraham. That is uh, Christians, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. Fire is coming from your head and all of that. He said, you are going to sit down here. People are going to come from north and south and east and west. 
And it has always been like that. There is always this principle of the first and the second Adam. Those of them who claim that they are the inner caucus, those who claim that they have been there from time immemorial and all of that, it gets to a time you just get used to God, get used to everything, and you will not know when you slide. So he said, men are going to come from afar, outside of this, that you don't even know. And then they will come into the kingdom, and then you yourself will be cast out. Why? Why did he say that? It's because of faith. If, if because of lack of faith, if it is because of lack of faith that somebody will be sent to the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, if that is the reason, then I think we must pay a very great attention to the subject of faith. The, the, because the Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2, in 4, it says, The just shall live by his what? By his faith. In Romans chapter 1, in 16 and 17, he says, as it is written, referring to Habakkuk, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. He mentioned it again in the book of Galatians chapter 3, in verse 13, where he said again, as it is written, the just Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us, for it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth on a tree, verse 14, that the blessings of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. But no man is justified. Okay, verse 11. But no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by what? By faith. And then in the book of Hebrew again, in, verse 10, in Hebrew 10, in that 38, he said, the just shall live by faith. And the word live means that everything about you is going to be by faith. Everything that controls your life is by faith. Without faith, you cannot contact God. You cannot connect with God. If you don't have, if you don't learn to live a life of faith, you are going to lose. You are not going to receive anything from God. The first, the Bible tells us in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 6, he said, without this faith, it is not possible for you to please God. That is, he didn't say that it's going to be difficult. He said it's going to be impossible to please God. I'm just highlighting this so that you see the importance of going back to the subject of faith. In Romans chapter 14, verse 23, it says, anything that is not done by faith is what? Sin. And even if you eat, so even you're eating, look at it, it says, and he that doubted is damned if he eats. Because he eateth not of faith. So even your food, the food you eat, you eat by faith. If you don't eat by faith, then you sin against God. And he said, because he that eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is what? Sin. In, John, in James chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, uh, actually from 5, he said, If anyone lack wisdom, let him ask God, ask of God that giveth to all men liberally without upbraid it, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. He said, But if you're going to ask, you have to do what? Ask in faith. If you don't ask in faith, you're not going to get what you are looking for. You can't get anything from God. He said, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind, and did what? And tossed, verse 7, 
For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So you can live your life without faith and the struggle continues. A life without faith is a very, very stressful life. It will drive you to begin to live in the flesh, depending in the arms of the flesh. You must learn, you must learn the subject of faith. That is why one of the basic fundamental principles of the doctrines of Jesus Christ is faith towards God. The primary, the basics. If you don't have it, if you don't equip it, because there are levels of faith, but you have to start from the basics. If you don't do that, you can't receive anything from God. He said, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. You can't receive your healing. You can't receive your breakthrough. You can't receive deliverance. Because tomorrow we have the night of power. You're going to come. We are not just going to pray for. We are trusting God for souls to be saved. And for the power of God to come. Because the Bible says in Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. That deliverance will not come your way if you don't have. It's faith that will connect you. This is the reason why God will step into a congregation. Maybe like 10,000 people. And he will leave every other people every other person and just zero onto one person. The reason is because God, that person has this element called faith. Faith is what attracts God to your direction. Faith is the basic requirement for any communion or any communication or any interaction between man and God. It is by faith. If you don't have it, you are going to live your life struggling. You are going to continue. Struggles continue. Everything that God has ever done or written in the Bible is about faith, is about trusting in God. We must learn this subject of faith. It is because of this lack of faith that made that young man that was given one talent to be bound hand and feet and be cast into the outer darkness where there is weeping and national. You know what happened? He was given one talent. Why didn't, what is the opposite of faith? What is the opposite of faith? Again? Fear. The opposite of faith is what? Fear. Because of lack of faith, you will not do what God assigned you to do. Because of lack of faith, you will not fulfill God's purpose and God's plans for yourself, for your life. Give me Matthew chapter 25. He said, verse 24, verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not done what? Sown. And where thou hast not sown, okay. And gathering where thou hast not done what? Strawed, that is labored. Okay, verse 25, look at what he said. I was what? Say with me, I was what? I was what? I was what? Afraid. It is fear that made him not to do what? Do what God has asked him to do. It is because of fear that made him not to use the grace that God has given to him. To do that assignment. So what happened? On the day of reckoning, when every man appeared before the presence of God or Jesus Christ at the Bema City to give an account, he found out that this man didn't do anything because of lack of faith. Because he was afraid. It is fear that pulls us back from doing what God has called us to do. That is why Paul said, I am not ashamed, I'm not afraid. I'm not intimidated. God has not given us the spirit of timidity. The spirit of fear. Fear is not of God. Fear is the opposite of faith. Fear is anti-God. 
And that is why the requirement for coming into the presence of God is that you must have faith. You must come with boldness, with confidence. That is why he said, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. It's not by, it's not, he says, sometimes, sometimes, even though you say you come by the blood and all of that and sin and sin and sin, and you do it a lot here. You be careful not to still use the same thing and then cripple people's confidence and their faith from assessing the presence of God. The Bible says, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, in verse 7, 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, he said, For if we walk in the light as he is in the light, what have what happened? And we have fellowship one with what? And what happens? What happens? You are not confessing the sin. You are not confessing anything. He said the blood automatically washes you. When you pass, when you, when you, when you pass a subject, an object through water, that object is drenched, is it not? With water, it cleanses it. Because there is a way you, you talk about sin, 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 sin. You become conscious of sin, sin consciousness. The same thing that is meant to do good to you will destroy you. What do we do? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today as the Bible declares, as we have fellowship with you and with one another. The blood of Jesus Christ washes and cleanses us. Father, we thank you because of the cleansing and the washing of the blood of Jesus Christ. You move on. Because there is a way you do. Because even the sin you are telling people to confess, it's not here that you confess your sin and they get. There is one that the blood of Jesus Christ does on his own. As we, as if we walk in the light, we are not the children of the dark. We are the children of the light. And so as we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another. As we are having fellowship here and all of that, the blood of Jesus already is taking care of certain things in our lives. He cleanses it. So what I'm saying in effect is that God expects us to come with absolute confidence. I don't think about, I don't think about any, I don't know about any, maybe there are some, you're, you're, you're a parent, you're a father or a mother, and your child wants to come to talk to you and he's afraid. Yeah, so when their parents are coming back, they will run into the house and they get into hiding because the daddy is coming back, because daddy is a... Is he there me? Or the mother is Thatcher? No. Is a friend. That's why he said, let us come with boldness, with full assurance of faith, with confidence, knowing that he is your father. If you have done anything wrong, the blood will take care of it. Because, you see, the reason is because you are not a, there is a difference between a sinner and somebody who makes mistakes. There's somebody who makes practice of sin. He does it, he enjoys it. He can be a Christian, he can be an unbeliever. That is where the problem is. But if you, you are not a sinner, you don't enjoy it, you don't like it, somewhere, somehow, you fall, or something happens and all of that. If the blood of Jesus takes care of it, if you come in the fellowship of the brethren, that's one of the benefits of coming into the fellowship of the brethren. I don't want to do that. So, now, the reason why we don't do what God asks us to do is because of fear. The bottom line is fear. The bottom line is lack of faith. O ye men of little faith. In other words, if you want to paraphrase it, it will be, O ye men of uh, fear. Men who fear, they can't do anything for God. They cannot do anything with God. 
is a very dangerous thing. And God frowns at it. Give me Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Now the just shall do what? Live by faith. How did, they, how did he say that the just shall live by? How? By faith. Say by faith. By faith. Say, I live by faith. Live by faith. The Bible says you eat by faith. Say, I eat by faith. I, eat by faith. I sleep by faith. I, sleep by faith. I, wake by faith. I wake up by faith. I receive from God by faith. I, God. I speak by faith. I Everything is by faith. Outside of it, you can't. He said, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul does not have pleasure in him. It's a very dangerous place to be. In other words, to doubt God, what is this faith? So when we talk about faith, what actually is this faith that we are talking about and how do we get this faith? Faith, simply put, is living by the word of God. Give me Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but man shall live by every word that did what? That proceeded out of the mouth of God. You live by every word that proceeds from his mouth. That's how you are supposed to live. Every word. So what you do is that you have to find out those words that Jesus said. Find out what those words of God are. Find them out and know what it is and then do it. That brings us to the first level of faith. Which says that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. This word of God, you must go back to it. You must study it. Faith is of essence. Faith is very important. You can't cast out devil without faith. You know why you cannot cast out devil? Because of fear. You know why you cannot lay hands on the sick? It's because of fear. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, you shall cast out devil. Mark chapter 16. Verse 16. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. Whosoever believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And verse 17 says, And this sign shall follow them that believe. It is faith in his name. These are the signs shall follow those of them that believe. How many of you believe? How many of you are believers in Christ? How many? If you believe in Christ, if you are born again, that is, can I see your hand up? Can I see, please see your hand up? Can you please just raise that your hand? If you're born again, if you're a child of God, then what did he say you should do? In whose name? What do you do? Do you cast out devils from people? Why don't you cast out devils? Why don't you cast out devil? Fear. Say with me, fear. fear. Call him by his name. Identify and acknowledge this is a... Because, you see, this, the process of bringing deliverance or solution to your life is by, number one, acknowledging that this is my situation. Because if you are evasive, if you are trying to avoid it and all of that, he can't come back in the next 20, 30 years. He's still there. So it is better you confront it head on. And I am trying as much as possible by the help of the Holy Spirit to be able to break this thing in a such a way that even if, even if you are you, you, you are a dollar. Even if you don't know anything at all, you will be able to understand it. And the Holy Spirit will help break it down further. 
Faithlessness is a disease. You, can't, you will be dying here. You will be dying. You will be dying right. You, death will be confronting you. And God will stay here and he will do nothing. I say God will stay here and you will be dying of that sickness. Or Satan will be harassing you and God will stay here and he will not do anything. Because he expects you to live by faith. Find out what his word is saying. Stand by his word and declare his word. Irrespective of the situation, irrespective of the circumstances. Because the word of God is not subject to any situation. It's not subject, it's not subjected to any circumstance or any whatever. That's why you have to study the nature of God's word as part of the basic requirement for your spiritual growth. So that's why I encourage you do a refresher course. You go back again because there are levels of faith. Oh, there are levels. Faiths are in levels. There is a little faith and weak faith. And there is strong faith and there is great faith. There are faith that moves mountains. There are faith that by men who through faith subdue. There are faith that subdue kingdoms. There are faith that wrought righteousness. There is a faith that quenched the violence of fire. There is a faith that received the dead back to life. There is a faith that stopped the mouth of lion. Get to that level. Because in these last days, in these last days, in these last days, in these last days, they that know they are God, they are the one that will be strong. They are the one that will do exploits. You see, when I say the things that I say, I don't say it because I'm trying to use psychology to psych myself up. Neither am I, I'm not saying it in order to brag. I'm not bragging. I am not, it's nothing. You see, eh? No matter who I say it anywhere, no matter who you are, you I'm not, I don't have one atom of fear about any human being, any mortal man. No matter as long as you have breath in your nose, I don't care who you are. Do you know why? You know why? The Bible says, if you're a follower of that which is good, tell me who will harm you. The only one that can harm me is the one that God gives permission. And if God doesn't give you that permission, go and sit down. You can do anything that you, when you finish, there's nothing you can do. I will walk away. My confidence is God's word. You pull a trigger and put it on my head. If God allows it, let it be so. If he doesn't allow it, that trigger will not work. I'm not afraid of your gun. I'm not afraid of your trigger. I say it not because I'm here. I say it outside there anywhere. Why do I do so? It's written. All the time that devil came to try Jesus Christ, we, he would talk, we talk, talk. When he finished, he said, listen to me. It is written. You will not worship any other God except your creator. Faith. What are we doing here? It is faith. Faith comes by hearing. It comes by hearing the word. Fear comes by hearing. By hearing the word of man. Today you are Today you are obedient. Tomorrow you are disobedient. <laughs> like wave of sea. Toss up and down. They say this one you follow. They say the other one. You don't know where you are standing. Stand on the word. I told you what I used to do in those days, early days. I will read and read and pray and pray and pray. I will drop my Bible. In order to activate, I say, Father, 
I open my Bible, I step on it, I say, I am standing on your word. I have done some unthinkable things in those days, especially when I was in the youth service. Why? It is the word. There is no other life to live. There is no other way. You see, it is lack of faith and fear that make you, whenever you have a problem and all, the next port of call, you think of who to call. You think of where to go. You think of the church. You think of how to go and raise money. You think of uh, who to call and all of that. It's because you don't have faith at all. And you are afraid. It's fear. Let not that person expect to receive anything from God. Because he is unstable in all his ways. Doesn't matter whether you are a student. God said to Jeremiah, Before I formed thee, I knew thee. I ordained thee in the womb to do X, Y, Z. And then Jeremiah opened his mouth and said, Ah, Lord, I am but a child. He said, Hey, shut up. It has nothing to do with your childishness, or childhood. It has nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with God and His Word. We must rise, oh. We must know what faith is. We must learn to live by the Word of God. You must meditate. That is why He said, meditate on it day and night. It must be part and parcel of you. Everything so that even when they put a needle and all of that what, uh, to aspirate blood, what they are going to be pulling out is faith from your vein. They will be looking for blood. They won't see. It must enter your system. Enter your... Hi, man. When you, when you are loaded, when you are loaded with faith, faith, faith is a pneuma force. They call it in Greek name, is a pneuma force. And when you are full of this faith, fire, that's when somebody looks at you, you see fire, fire. Coming from your eyes. That's what the word of God does. He says it's like a Fire. No, they, 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 you, you are talking and your words are weak. You are a king. How many of you know that you are a king? And where the king is? Where the king is? There is what? Power. That's how the king rules. So why will your words be weak? Why will you be afraid? Afraid of situations, afraid of circumstances. Somebody is sick. You know why you are not laying hands? Fear. It's fear that is a problem. And I don't know why you love fear. You like it, you love it, you embrace it. And God is saying, I have not given it to you, I have not given you the spirit of fear. But you like it. That's why someone will be here speaking, teaching or preaching, maybe about healing or whatever. You see, someone has faith. You can literally see that thing in the person's eyes. And Jesus will say, stretch forth your hand. Because he can see faith in them. person will stretch forth his hand, the hand will grow. So preach faith. The word. You see, we have, if you don't have this, you can't meet with God. Though. You can't stay with anything that, anything you want to be in heaven, you start from here. It's not when you get to heaven, you have faith. It's not when you get to heaven, then you begin to live holy life. Is it? It's not when you get to heaven, you begin to practice righteousness. It is here. Faith must start from here. The just shall live by faith. 
in the book of Revelation 8 or thereabout, where the, one of the things the Bible says, the condition, he said, the fearful, those who will not enter the kingdom of heaven. He said, the fearful, the abominable. You don't have, a, you don't have any, any inheritance at all with, with God. You don't have any inheritance with heaven. I don't, I, don't, I don't have anything wrong with um, someone asking for prayer. Hello? But you ask for prayer this year. Next year, you come and line up again for prayer. Two years later, you are lining up again for prayer. You will go to the outer darkness. I'm telling you the truth. I lie not. I'm being very factual, very honest with you. You will find yourself in the out because you don't have faith. You don't have faith at all. The Bible says, the just shall live. According to Habakkuk, he said, the just shall live by his own faith. You don't depend. Initially, when you are growing up, when you are coming up in the faith, that is you're growing up spiritually, and or you're just newly born again and you are growing. Yeah, you can depend on somebody's faith. Maybe your, your son or your daughter, you know, it depends on your parents' faith. You can't see anybody in the Bible that Jesus Christ healed, any child, without the concept, without the faith of either the father or the mother or the parents. You, if you see anyone in the Bible, show me. But at that level, you can depend on the faith of your parents. Or in the faith of your pastor, or in the faith of that your brother or your fellow sister, and all of because you are just growing up. But the Bible says, even Paul said, when you ought to be teachers, when you ought to be teachers, you say have need to be taught. At a particular level, God expects certain level of faith in your life. And so the challenges that are going to come will match with it. So when those challenges come and your faith is not there, doesn't meet it, what will happen? It will swallow you. And then you start looking for who to pray for you. Like I said, there is nothing wrong with somebody praying for you or praying with you and all of that. But you are not going to live that way. I don't want anyone, anytime I want to fetch water, I go to the main road, to the public water, and be fetching water. Because you come to the public uh, pipe, tap, where the water, you have to queue on the line. And then, when it is your turn, you fetch. Why don't you want to have a borehole in your house? Dig a borehole, or dig a well, so that you'll be getting any time tea, you get it for yourself. You must develop your own personal faith. How does faith come? One, I told you there are three levels of operations of faith. There is the faith, which is the basic, which you must get. The faith that comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. So that you can live by it. Hebrew chapter, f I mean, sorry, Matthew 4 4. He answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread only. He's not only by food. He said, But by what? Every word that does what? Proceed out of whose mouth? If I were you, I would mark, I would take note of that word. Every word that proceeded out, out of the mouth of God, not out of the mouth of. Because there are so many things I see people pray, a prayer topic. There are some prayer topics here, which is not. Not everything that is in this Bible that is God's word. Do we agree? Yes. Not everything that is God's word. There are word of men here. Find out the one that God said. That's why I love, that is why, if you, if the, if you check the Bible, the epistles, 
there are almost, almost 100 Pauline prayers, almost about 100 Pauline prayers scattered all over the back. If you take out time and read it, you will see. And those prayers, and even the ones that are in the, in the book of Psalms and all of that, they are, when I say the book of Psalms, I know where you're going to now. Dangerous Psalms. That's not what I'm talking about. When the Bible says, why should the heathen rage and the people imagine venting and the kings of the earth gather themselves against the elect? It is the book of Psalm. He will quote it in the Acts of Apostles chapter 4. That's the kind of prayer I'm talking about. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Can you give me an example? You don't say it. Give me an example of the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Eh? Hebrew. Hebrew 13. Hebrew 13.5. Let's look at Hebrew 13.5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he had said, I will never leave you nor do what? Who said? Who said? Hey! Who said Kambiana Faya? Eleke Mambo Kobaya. I found this. He said, He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. I am good to go. I'm good to go. You don't know, you don't know how to get do this thing. Sometimes in those days, eh, I will take a piece of paper, I will write it on a piece of paper, put it in my pocket. Or if I have a book, I put it. After some time, I'll bring it out again, I will look at it. He said, He will never leave me, nor forsake me. <laughs> I say, I got it. And because you believe it in your heart and you give it a voice, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. His words are yea and amen. Yeah, give me another word. The one that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What? Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, for I know the thought, that is a plan, that I think towards you. What kind of plan? Say who? Thought of what? And not to give me an expected end. <laughs> I'm settled. You know, that is why I told you on the 31st December last year, find a scripture. Find one. That one scripture, eh? that one scripture, for your entire life, if you're going to live for 100 years, you will not finish the content of that one scripture. You will not finish it. Anytime you go back and open that prayer, you pray and pray, and after some time you go back again and read, another thing will come out of it. The same scripture, you have not read another one. The dimensions of God's word and all of that is so deep. You can't assess it all. They are unsearchable. The word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He said, if you are a follower, you see, for a, you see all those Pauline prayers. They are spirit-inspired words. Prayer. They are inspired by the Holy Spirit. And anything that is inspired by the Holy Spirit endure forever. Mm -hmm. 
So I marry them. I find out what they are. I pray them. Yeah, give me another one. The word proceed that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yes, give me another one. John 15. John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So what does it mean to abide in him? I'm living by him. I'm living for him. He is my source. He is my sustainer. In him I live and move and have my being. He is my exceeding great reward. I tell him all this when I go down on my knees. You see, when you get to this level, this is the first level. From here now, you move to the next level. There is another level. You know what is the next level? You get into the spirit now, the spirit realm. You go beyond. You have laid this foundation. That is why, you see, you must have this foundation. The word, the word, the word, the word. You must have the word foundation. Anything that God said in his word, hold on to it. You will never go down. Find out the one that he said. That is what is called scriptural faith. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the things that have gone out of my mouth. Just like the rain falls down to the earth and waters the earth and then provides nutrients for the plants to grow and bud and produce fruits and then you go and make your harvest. He says, so shall the water has proceeded out of my mouth. It shall not come back to me void. It must accomplish that whereunto I have sent it. My word. No weapon designed against me shall prosper. Any tongue that rises against me in judgment, I will finish you. It's not this one, it's a back to sender, back to sender. Somebody, my they are, you know, you know. I'm sure you have got those text messages. They said uh, this number. If this number calls you, don't pick the number because uh, they now tell you that uh, there is someone that um, that uh, they call the number and the person uh, and the person is dead, and they are sending it everywhere. So my brother, they sent me. They said, please, I beg you. Don't pick this number when it calls. Don't even try it. I, color, I collected the number. I dialed it. I dialed the number. The number didn't ring. I now sent him. I said, I, I've called. He said, I said, I called the number. I said, I've called the number. Hey. Hey. Grow up. How did we if I don't have do I have two heads? I don't have two heads. It's just that it's your desire, is what you desire. This thing is more important than that job you are doing. This thing is more important than that your business. This thing is more important than whatever it is that you are doing in this your life. You know, this is where it begins. You say you should live by faith. You don't live by sight. You don't walk by sight. It is by faith. It is the beginning and the end. Before you ever think about anything. 
It's more important than that business you are doing. It's more important than that job you are doing. It's more important than that your car. It's more important because that is what holds every other thing together. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. By faith. Now faith is the substance of things. Hope, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2. For by the elder, by it elders obtain a good report. Verse 3 now said, through faith we understand that the words we are framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen, we are not made of things which do appear. So what are you telling me? This is what controls everything out of the entire universe. Even this world that we are living, this world that we are living in, this whole planet Earth and all of that, is held in place by the spoken word. The power of the word is what is holding it. This heaven that is high up there and all of that, it, it, what is holding it, it will, it will collapse and then fall on us and everybody will die. You know what is holding it? It's the word of God. And there has never been any, any story that, ah, ah, we are experiencing some vibration in the, in the heavenly zone, in the air. It's like the heaven wants to fall. It's the word of God that is holding it. You are a product of a word. Hello? I say you are a product of the word. It's the word that made you. And it is that word that will keep you. It is that word that will raise you. It is that word that will destroy you. It is the word. You are a product of word. Word. W-O-R-D. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion. Word made you. So you can't live without, you can't do without word. But go for the right kind of word. The word of God. Because it is the word of God that made you. Stay in God's word. Hello? From here now, you move to the next level. The next step, the next level, which we find in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. That's the next level. We have the same spirit of faith. Say faith is a spirit. Faith is another realm. Say another realm of faith. When you get to this realm, hmm? hello, when you get to this realm, at the top level, when you think about something, you just think about it, that thing happens. You just have a need you just think about that your need. You just think about it. One day, two days. You, are, you didn't pray. I didn't say you pray. You didn't confess anything. Just the thoughts. You think about it. One day later, two days later, it will happen. This is what is happening to me till today that I'm talking to you. As I'm talking... If you want, I can give you. If you is private, you can come. I will show you. I will just think about it. That thing happens. Thought level, spirit. How do you get there? If you don't have the first one, you can't get to the second one. But this is the foundation to step to the next level. It's a level where when you come into the where is is when you behold him, when you when you have fellowship with him, when you have a relationship with him, with Jesus Christ. You know what a lot of people do? They don't have a relationship with someone. They have not seen Pastor Uzo. I've not seen you for about two, three weeks or one month or six months or one year. And then there is a need that I know that you can help me solve. I will just pick up a phone. I say, Pastor Uzo, how now? He says, it's fine. 
I'm sending somebody to you to please just give the person 100K for me. Okay, 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 okay. Consider it done. Is that what we do? But if it's somebody that you have had, you've been having one-on-one -on -one with, fellowship with, you've been talking, exchanging pleasantries, you are sending texts and calling on the phone, he visits you, visit him, he's your friend. It is easy. And it just call, just that you are not happy, that your friend will ask you, what is the matter? True or false? Just that you, are, you have not said anything, you are not happy. Or something, you just notice your countenance is not what it's supposed to be. He start asking you, ah, ah, why are you down like this? Why are you quiet like this? What's going on? And, uh, talk to me. What is it? Is it whatever? It's just this uh, money. He says, how much is it? It's 30,000 naira. Okay, don't worry. I will get it. But when you don't have fellowship with the person and all of that, if you like, if you like, let your face be like this. He will not notice you. And even when he notices, if he sees you coming, he will follow the other way. No rapport. That is the attitude we have with Jesus Christ many of times. No fellowship with him. I don't mean when you go, I don't mean, when I, see, when I talk about fellowship, you know what I mean? That's not what I'm talking about. That's not fellowship. That's not fellowship. Fellowship is you sit down, you talk with him. Good morning, Heavenly Father. I mean, your presence. I just want to thank you for yesterday. I did X, Y, Z, and all of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what to say about you. You amazes me a lot. No wonder the psalmist David said that your loving kindness is better than life. I'm amazed. I just want to thank you for X, Y, Z. Lord, I want you to help me. I, I read this thing. I did not understand it. I want you to show me. I want you to help me because you said when you come, you are going to teach me. You are going to show me. I want you to show me this. I want you to teach me this. Yes, fellowship. We are talking with. When you walk out of it, you see, his presence rubs off on you. His glory rubs up on you. There is something that happens inside of your heart. You are alive in the spirit. Your spirit is alive. At a thought level, you get to a point where it's just, you have a problem, you just think about it. You know, you know, you know, <laughs> you know that thing you are telling me about June, the plan for June. You know, I was just thinking, when am I going to, how, the next thing, it was the, I think a few hours later she came in. He said, let me tell you something. I won't tell you what he said. I know your eyes are, your tears are open like this. When I heard it, I just smiled. I said, it, it happens all the time to me. Hello, hello. I lie not, God bears me witness. Even if it's a need of a million naira, even if it's a, mean, a need of 500, whatever that need, the thought, when I think about it, it will not last. 24, 48 hours, maximum three days, that thing shows up. I won't pray about it. The spirit of faith. It comes through one-on-one -on -one with the Holy Spirit. It comes through one-on-one -on -one with Jesus Christ. Fellowship with him. Then there is another level. There is another level. The ultimate. 
is the level of the glory, the glory of God when it comes upon you. That one speaks. You just come. Some people are making trouble. He's, God will fight. He will, destroy, he will go ahead of you. Things are happening. You have not said anything. You have not done anything. God goes ahead of you. He does. You know, that is why David said, it is this glory, this level. David was operating in that level. David said, even though, in Psalm 23, verse 4, he said, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'm not afraid because your presence is with me. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. You carry the glory. You can, you are not faith. You have left the realm. You you know you can. James chapter one, verse James one one, or two. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse what? Temptations. Verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be able, that you may be what? Perfect and complete. Wanting what? Is a realm. Is another realm. <laughs> Is another realm, the glory. Wanting nothing, you are not. There is nothing again. Is is it? It's not that you have everything. No. It's not that you have all the cars, you have all the houses, you have gotten everything. So what else? It's not like that foolish man that Jesus said, that foolish man that uh, said, now that I have gotten everything, my barn is full and all of that. Now my soul can now relax and enjoy. The Bible say. Thou foolish man, that very night your soul is revived. That's not what I'm talking about. You may not even have, but you don't lack anything. But what doesn't belong to you, you don't go there, you don't look in that direction. You are contented, you are satisfied, you are full, you are complete. Money won't be your problem. And when somebody says, take, take, even when the little you have, you are giving out, you are giving people and all of it, you come to that realm. That's the realm, the glory of God. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'm not afraid because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. His comfort is God's word. Your presence. That's why the Bible says, when they were but a few, God was going ahead of them. He said, touch not my, and do what? My prophet no harm. That's the glory of God going with them. As little as they are, when they were but a few in number, you can count them. They will enter a country, a, con a country of his own, well equipped. And these are people that came out from Egypt. They neither know their right or their left and all of that. When they were but a few in number and they were just moving and they will enter the, 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 the country they want to pass through. Maybe the president or whatever will say, no, you can't do that and all of that. And they will just go through the border of the, of the country to, and then you will resist them and they begin to fight. They will fight you and they will conquer you and they will take your territory. God is the one doing it. And they never lost one. When Israel was Israel, when Israel, when God was with Israel, all the battles they fought, not one person died. Not one person. With all those spears they were throwing, they would go to battle, came back. Not one person would be wounded. Not even to talk about death. The presence of God. The glory of God. That's why I say there are three aspects of the presence of God. He said there is the Holy Spirit, God within you. God inside of you. 
There is God on you and there is God with you. The one that is inside of you, God in me, is for your personal development to build yourself. Is to build your character, build your, the fruit of the spirit and all of that. Is for the character, is for development, spiritual development. Then the one that is on you is for service. And you got that one. The one inside of you, you got it by being born again. The one that is on you, you got it by the, in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that is why if you are here and you are not baptized in the Holy I see some of you, some of you, some women and all that, some of you are married. And some are men. I see you, I see you, I notice you. When they are praying you, don't say anything. Just keep your mouth shut. You are finished though. I don't care who you are. Say you are finished. And some of them are not even, they are not baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you are comfortable. But that is why they cannot pray. Because even if you study English or language, like, um, oh, sister, you study PhD. If they, with all, is, is it not English you are studying? PhD, Doctor of Philosophy. He had done the first degree, done the master, then he's doing the PhD. She has finished her PhD. They pray now. You bring English. You speak English. You see all those you are grammar. It will not take you more than, highest you can speak that grammar, maybe like five minutes. You have exhausted all your grammar. And the Bible says avoid vain repetition. So what are you going to do? Oh, you hear them, uh, oh Lord, we come into your presence today to thank you because you are a great God, because you are a wonderful God, because you are, you are, you are he will be thinking about what to say again. He has finished, the language has finished. But if it is tongue, salamba, salabana, teteka, helena maya. Etemenioko, Savriana, Entena Gaya, Sibedea, La Cavana, Emekaya, Suala Kebizu, Promana Kai. It comes from inside, inside, is here, out of your belly, 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 it flows. Korob! There are tongues and there are tongues. Yeah, every time, botai, 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 botai. Even in English, you are speaking. Don't you have? Don't you grow in your grammar? Don't you grow in your vocabulary? Don't you? Hello, don't you grow in your vocabulary? Every time, mama male, mama male, male male, mama male. I move to something else. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. No restriction. From level to level, from depth to depth. There are tongues when you feel, you be tongues, you be building. Why did you think those buildings shake, shook in um, Acts of Apostles chapter 4. What do you think the building shook? They were praying, uh, uh, oh, holy mama, mama, holy mama, holy mama, mama, holy mama. Is it holy mama, mama, holy mama? That is why the building shook. There are no kinds of tongues you will, when sometimes you hear. There are even, there are, some of them are Satan, tongues of Satan. They are speaking. It. Remember in FCC, I don't know, I don't, because I don't know who the person is. Let me just keep my, let me just, Lord, I'm sorry. Holy mama, holy mama, holy mama, holy mama, holy mama, holy mama. That's what we are hearing. No. You need to come and lay, they lay hands on you. Let that fountain of the deep break forth. You know, when you bring it out, when you bring that river of living water, when you bring it out, Anything that it touches come alive. Anything that it touches will come alive. 
Now you carry because it's the glory. It's when you don't that. He said, he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. When that thing comes, that's baptism in the Holy you will prophesy. See, when you finish, so you see, sometimes you say something, that thing comes to pass. You say it, it comes to pass. I don't know whether you have happened, whether it happened to you. I'm not talking about happening once in a while. It becomes the order of the day in your life. I'm telling you what I do. I'm telling you what I, And if you don't want anything bad and all of that, better don't say it. Because if you say it, it will happen. They are powers. They are prophetic. You will get into the realm of that prophetic. It's through this means you get there. These are left, they are dead. And all these things are available to us. It's available. It's available. Is there any particular person that, is there any particular thing that you need to do in order to do it? Do you need any particular qualification? Do you need any particular hand to be laid on you? Do you need, it's available. You see, everything that we are talking about. Can you help me find it? It is the honor of God to hide things, but it is the glory of the king to search it out. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. Proverbs 20, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2. It is the glory of God to conceal what? A thing. But the honor of kings is to search it out. This thing is talking about working out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's what he's talking about. It's another way of saying, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Do you know what it is? How many of you have the Holy Spirit inside of you? The Bible said that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But you see, that Holy Spirit, is the, that's the glory of God is inside of you. Hello? That Holy Spirit is the glory. Is the, that the Bible says, in Romans chapter 8, I think it's verse 18, he said, I am convinced that there is nothing that we are going through in this life that will be compared with what? The glory that shall be revealed to us. Did he say to us? Where? In us. That glory is inside of you. It was that same glory that was in Christ when he went to Mount of, that Mount of Transfiguration and he began to pray. That glory came out. He trapped inside it is, that glory is trapped inside. It's not like in the New Old Testament. You are carrying that glory inside of you. You see, eh, when you are praying, if you don't understand the New Testament, you will be praying. You will be praying unbelief prayer. Unbelief. That is, the, you can be praying it, and the whole atmosphere will be shaking and all of that. But it's full of unbelief. If you don't understand the New Testament. You can't be praying for power. Do you know why? He that is in you is greater than he that is where? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. He was praying that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that he has of understanding being enlightened so that you may know the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense. Verse 19. And what is the what? Exceeding greatness of his power to who? Who do what? According to the working of his mighty power. It's inside of you. This power is inside of you. This glory is inside. It's not outside. 
God has concealed them inside. It is your duty to find it out. It is your duty to work it out. It is your duty to make it come out. That's your assignment. That's my assignment. If you don't do anything about it, you will remain trapped. It's just like that alabaster box that has that oil fragrance inside of it. You, it is your duty to break it so that that oil will come out. That fragrance will come out. That aroma will come out. If you don't do anything, it will remain there. You are carrying it. And that is why you go places from places where people will know. He say, you don't you know that you are gods? But because you do not know that you are gods, you will die like men, men. You are carrying this thing inside of you. Walk it out. And that's what we are telling you, how to walk it out, step by step. You must walk. No bread for a lazy man. These are the things, when you get to this level, the Bible, when you say calling things that be not as though they were, you are speaking and things are happening. You just think about it, it happens. You call it, it happens. You decree, he said you shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you. It's not when you are doing confession of faith. That's not when it happens. You get to this realm. When the realm of the prophetic, the thing hits on you. And if you must function in this realm, you must be a worshiper. <laughs> you must be a worshiper. You must learn how to praise God. You must be a praiser, a praising machine. You must know how to praise God. You must know how to worship. That's why God is seeking for those who will worship him in truth and in spirit. You must learn to worship. You must go back to the school and learn what it means to worship. You know what we call when maybe because song is fast, it becomes praise. When you sing it is low or slow, it becomes worship. You are a baby. Amen. When you get to this realm, hmm? Hmm? If you like, if you like, let it be pneumonia, let it be COVID, let it be cancer, let it, no matter what, it can never, it can't stay in this body. It's a lie. Anybody that gets to this, I might say that skin sickness is a, is a lie from the pit of hell. What I'm telling you is what I have done. I have handled it, I have touched it, I have experienced it. In those days, I tell people, you know, if, you, if you like, you know, CC, you can tell. I told him, I said, any time that I'm sick, don't pray for me. I don't need prayer. Anytime anything is happening around me, in those days, I said, don't pray for me. I told him, don't pray for me. All I need you to do is to remind me. This thing that I need to do is a worship. There was one time. It was, it was this level. I don't know what to call it. I don't know whether I was actually dying. It was in Onicha. In those days, we were in Onicha. The ministry was started. I got one music worship song that ministers deep into me. I put it on. As they were singing, I was worshiping with them. I was worshiping. I was worshiping. I was worshiping. Worship through the night. I slept off. The music was playing. I woke up in the morning again with the same sickness and all of that. But that music was still playing. I followed through in worship and I worship and I worship and I worship. I didn't know as I was doing that the whole thing was clearing from. By evening time, I stood up. I walked away. One lady, a lady, if you look at, she, always, she was always covering her hair with scarf, ever since I knew her. It was one day she opened up and said, actually, there was a problem with my hair. 
You know what is into? That is um, ash. You remove the, the hair cover, the cloth. You see ash everywhere in her hair. Say it's been like this. Say they have prayed. They have done this. I think about three, four, five people. As everybody get on your knees, yeah, we began to worship. We began to worship. We began to worship. Worship for about 30 minutes or thereabouts. We we'll pray in the name of Jesus Christ. We finished. She covered her head and got up. Everybody left. The following day, she ran to me. As if to say, God gave her a brand new hair. Everything disappeared. Worship. You want to get, you know, in the Old Testament, the prophet, when they want to do anything and all, you know what they do? He said, Get me one. Music. When she gets into that, and heaven opens. God lives and thrives in worship by worship and praises. He's fearful. The praises of his people. I said, when we show praise, we don't know what it means. We don't know what it is. We don't know. We think it is. You know, you know, you know that Aaron's rod that bordered is in the presence of God. These are the things that make it happen. He has no magic. And so sometimes, because of the distractions of time, of life, and all of that, you withdraw yourself, you separate yourself, and give yourself time to fast and pray. Fasting and pray is not to curry favor from God. That's not it. It's just to discipline your body. It's just discipline. You can't get anything by because you have done X, Y, Z. So you are entitled to this. No. It's not like a miloko. Is it a miloko, a miloko, a miloko? No. He's God. I do it to humble myself, to discipline myself so my spirit can come alive and make contact. Do this. You will never have problems struggling with your faith. Anytime you have any challenge, no matter who the person is, don't ever open your mouth and Fear. Why will you be afraid of who? The only thing why you will be afraid is because you have. Go back to this. Start from this. Get to the realm of spirit of faith. You just think about it, the thing is happening. Then you get to the other realm where the glory of God comes upon you. God is the one that is taking control. What do you do? How do you get into that? It's through worship. It's through praise. It's through studying and meditating in the word of God. All these things. Do it. Who is that job? You say you are looking for job. His job will be looking for you. He say this sign shall follow you. You are not the one following the sign. They will follow you. Say you are looking for a job for four years, you don't have a job. For one month, you don't have that. You've been looking for a job, you don't have a job, you don't have the, you don't have that. Ah. And then, how many of you have faith now? How many of you? You see, on this, whatever, anything you open your mouth now to declare, it will happen. Open it. Declare, yeah. As long as your heart is open, you declare it, it will come. And that is what, you know why I'm doing this? Is for tomorrow. You prepare your heart. When you hear in the name of Jesus Christ, Peter, your heart, your valve is wide open and all of that. Me, I don't, you see, I lift my hand. If it's possible, I will lift my leg. I will everything up. I'll collect, 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 collect. I know the few that I have I know with them. What, do you, what are you going to say you have not? Are you going to preach better than Jesus Christ? You are a child. You are a baby. You, so we sit down and we learn. Anyone that is coming, you just open your heart. 
because you don't know what God is coming. He might, he might be thinking about uh, his uh, salvation and all. Uh, he will give salvation. The thing that, there is a thing that accompanies salvation. You understand, John? He will come with it. It says marriage is whatever. Who said you? Chapter what verse what? Declare it. When you get to this realm, speak. You will be changed into another man. When you say the glory of God is risen upon you, the glory of God is risen upon you for what? That glory that is risen upon you is anything you open your mouth to say. Whether they are good or bad, it will happen. So that's why he said the life and death are in the power of the tongue. But you see, but because, because we are in this world, this damn condemned world that ruled by Satan and all of that, it's, it, it, you don't have to fast and pray in order for evil to happen. You don't have to fast and pray. Do you? You don't have, you don't have to fast or pray for any evil. It just it happens on its own. You say it will happen. And once you say it with your mouth, Satan and the angels of death and the demons are done, they are ready. Because that's what they are waiting for. They will carry it out. But if you say the one that is good, they will not do it. And they will resist the angel from doing it. They are fighting them. That's why you need to get to that realm. Amen. Stand up to your feet. Father, we thank you today for the entrance of your word. It gives light. A lamp unto my feet, a light unto our path. We ask you tonight for your children. And whatsoever is their needs, Whatever is the challenge today, so that tomorrow you will not be coming, and uh, when you are going to be helping organize and help other people that are coming, the souls that are going to be one and all of that, so that when they are doing, you, you will because I notice sometimes you see even some of the ushers they will leave the offering that they are doing, they will come and they, uh, they leave their hand to collect. Collect your own now. Hello? I say, collect your own now. Yes. Did you hear what I say? Yes. I say, you can, I'm helping you so that tomorrow you will be free to help to minister to others. Amen. Amen. So lift up your hand and collect your own. I want you to open your mouth, speak, and God will hear you and God will answer you. This night, tonight, here in this place, whatever it is, speak. And don't bother whether you have spoken on the 31st January or 31st December. Say it again. A young man, Jesus Christ, cast out devil from open his eyes. He said, look, he said, I see seamen looking like trees. And Jesus put his hand again and then touch him the second time. Say it, if you say it the second time, say it the third time, say it the fourth time, speak it. You will come to pass. Kalanama Solobora. Testimonies will abound. Testimonies will come. God will hear you. God will answer you. God will visit you. God will hear the cry of your heart. The angels of God will go ahead of you. Glory to your name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. You say the desires of our heart you will grant. The expectations of the righteous will not be cut off. And I pray tonight, Lord, everything that they have lifted up their voice unto you concerning their needs, Lord, that not one of them will go unmet. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say amen. amen. Then put down your hands. Say it is done. It is done. Thou shalt say unto the righteous, it is well with your soul. Yes. I declare it is well with your soul. Amen. 
I say it is well with your soul. Amen. Your soul will no longer be troubled again. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. there shall not be any barrenness anymore. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. barrenness of the body will go. Amen. Barrenness of the works of your hand will cease. Amen. It is fruitfulness. Amen. Fruitfulness. Amen. Fruitfulness. Amen. We call for fruitfulness into your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory be to your name. Anything that is not of God, because the Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Anything that God does not plant inside of you, we uproot it right now. We uproot it in your life. In the name of Jesus. Go out of this world. Lose your hold from their lives. We break them down. Out in the name of Jesus. Every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, whether it's in the blood, whether it's in the womb, whether wherever it is in your body, it is a stranger and it cannot stay in your body anymore. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we adjure you, Satan. Whoever that is behind it, we cut your hand off. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the blood of Jesus is against you, Satan. Over God's inheritance, you have no lot in them anymore because they have been bought with the, pre the precious blood of Jesus Christ. They no longer belong to you, they belong to Jesus. Father, we thank you. As we go to the communion table, we establish every covenant that we have in you in Christ Jesus. We bless the bread, we bless the cup. As we eat and drink, we remember the Lord's day till he comes. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray.